working with bitmaps. As I mentioned at the start of this lesson, there are many, many ways to work with bitmaps in Flash. You, you can import them, a whole series of formats. We can manipulate them inside of Flash. We can convert them to vectors, even. And then, of course, we can export them uh, either on their own or as part of our Flash project. To import bitmaps, we will use the import options in the file menu. There are two. There's the option to import to stage and the option to import to library. If you import to library, the bitmap will end up in your library. If you import to stage, the bitmap will end up both in your library and on your stage. You can import uh, pings, bitmaps, tiffs, gifs, jpegs, pics, uh, targa files. Um, if Flash senses that um, the bitmap is part of a series of bitmaps, that is if they all have the same name except 001, 002, 003 at the end, uh, Flash will say this appears to be part of a sequence. Do you want me to import the whole sequence? So you can very quickly and easily import an entire image sequence. Um, but again, once you've imported it, it is in your library. And now we can select File, Import, Import to Stage. Uh, if you navigate to the image folder and the assets folder under course parts, you'll see I have some images here that you can work with. I'll select Puck and import Puck. And now you'll see that Puck is on my stage and in my library. Once Puck is on my stage, and uh, here let me collapse my, my tools some more. Uh, once Puck is on my stage, I can select Punk and then move him around just like any other content that we've learned how to work with. I can use the free transform tool to uh, skew Puck and to rotate Puck and to scale Puck. Once the bitmap is on our stage, it is modifiable just like all the other kinds of content. Now one of the reasons Flash, again, established its initial market was because of its ability to create these uh, great experiences for the web, but it really small file sizes. And while uh, with broadband penetration rates uh, really increasing, the concerns are somewhat different these days than they were back in the olden days, um, it still does matter what your file size is. And you shouldn't be taking up excess file size uh, that, that, that you don't need uh, with particularly right images and, as we'll learn later, sounds. Um, so you want to get the compression settings correct on the images that you use in your in your flash move there are two ways of setting the image compression settings in flash one is document wide that will affect all images in your document the next is on an individual image basis that is for each image in our library we can control the compression settings so i'll bring up the library and i will right click on puck and select properties. And now we see, and actually if, if your window looks like this, you can click the basic button because we don't need the advanced view for our purposes right now. Uh, you'll see the bitmap properties option. And uh, you know here we can actually just set the name for how he appears in our library. We can specify whether or not to allow smoothing. This is actually a really important option if you're planning to scale your image either up or down. We have compression option, so if I select lossless, that would of course be the highest quality and would result in the um, in uh, the highest uh, in the largest uh, export file size. And we have photo compression, where we can choose to use the imported JPEG data, uh, or we can apply a custom compression rate on our JPEG. Right, so now I'll say 50%, and I will click OK. And now I've changed the compression settings that would be applied uh, to this image when exported. Now to see the impact of that, if we go to the course folder, under part two, shapes and bitmaps in the course parts folder, uh, select bitmap compression sample.fla, open that up. And you'll see what I've done here is I've actually prepared um, a, uh, a document, an FLA, if I, if I look in the library, you'll see I have a high quality and a low quality version of the same bitmap. And so this, this is mocked up to emulate the difference. If we test our movie by, uh, by typing command return or control return or enter, on the top we have the higher quality image. Just beneath that we have a much lower quality image. And so right here in the middle, the image is uh, set with a much lower compression rate. And then beneath that, what I've done is I've actually applied a difference blend. 
so that we can see visually how many pixels are different between the two versions of the same image. So uh, compression is really an art form. It's always a balance between file size and image quality. You don't always just want to choose the lowest compression that you can. There's one other feature of working with bitmaps in Flash that I uh, want to cover, and that is uh, converting uh, bitmaps into vectors. Select File, Import, Import to Stage, and instead of Puck, I'll choose Puck Thumb, which is just a much smaller image. And because it's so much smaller, I can actually zoom in Command Plus. So what I want to do here is convert this bitmap into a vector. The way I can do that in Flash is by, first of course, selecting the bitmap, but then selecting Modify, Bitmap, Trace, Bitmap. And now we have some options that appear. Uh, we can specify the color threshold, the minimum area, the curve fit, and the corner threshold. Um, all four of these settings will have significant impact both on the visual quality of the end product, the traced bitmap, and on the file size. Right. So the more photo real the traced bitmap looks, the, obviously the higher file size uh, that we're going to end up with. Um, I've ex tried to explain here on this slide what these uh, different settings mean, but of course, as with everything like this, you're going to want to experiment and, and generate um, a few different versions of your own just to see what you can end up with. But you see, I put in some values, clicked OK, and it generated now a vector shape of the bitmap, right? So if I click away, just to prove it to you, right? These now behave like raw shapes. I can I can click and distort them. I can select this patch on Puck's forehead and um, turn it blue, right? So these now behave like vectors. And I could select all, Command A, let me zoom out, switch over to the free transform tool, and now scale this up. And you can see the the result. Now it, it, we do have some pixel-like distortion and that's because uh, we made the vector look like a bitmap but it's again it's not scaling the same way that the bitmap itself would.